Okay, so a question I got was on trauma, uh, flashbacks. What can I do? Can I cancel them? Um, it's hard to forgive. Uh, so that's um, you could. I, my view is this is a world of purgatory. So it means it's a, a world where I have to resolve my karma. I have to resolve my belief systems. Um, and my uh, belief systems or karma, uh, if you go along with past lives, which I do, and this life, um, there's lots of karmic interactions with other individuals. There's lots of choices I've made. And there's consequences to those choices. So if I was nasty to someone, they might be nasty back to me. I might not be aware why because maybe I was nasty to them in a, in a past lifetime. Uh, and so I get the payback in this lifetime. So I'm not always aware that I can remember why people are behaving in a certain way. Uh, a lot of people have trouble with childhood experiences because they have the view that they're innocent uh, when these things happen. But if you sometimes, if you look into past lives, you see that, that there, there are reasons, even for stuff that happens in childhood. For example, if you've got a, a difficult parent, um, and then as a as a small child, uh, you had a difficult time, and uh, what you might not be able to see is that in the past lifetime, you might have been the parent giving a child a very difficult time, you see, so you can't see that. So that's why um, a lot of people, I mean, especially they come to me and struggle with childhood stuff. Uh, I can forgive someone when I'm an adult, but I'm why should I forgive anyone who does anything to me when I'm a child? Well, then um, the thing would be then, you know, if you could go to a hypnotherapist and do a past life regression, or if you could uh, get some muscle testing done to check out whether you had set up in a previous lifetime consequences that came back to you as a child, you'd see that actually nothing happens karmically by accident. Uh, that helps. That helps me anyway, forgive. Because one of the things that uh, with unforgiveness, like I, they don't deserve to be forgiven because what they did is so bad that I will never forgive them. And I'm going to be angry at them and hold my anger with them and try and punish them myself for the rest of my life. So that that kind of attitude means that I'll be forever in bondage and anger and bitterness. I, I can I cannot I can never let go and be free. Uh, so. Uh, the Course in Miracles uh, has various levels of wisdom on that. Uh, one is God is a love in which I forgive. I ask God to help me with God's love to forgive. Um, and later on, uh, there's the uh, section in the lessons which refers to eventually you find out there's nothing to forgive. Once you recognize your own true innocence, your oneness with God, and the innocence of everyone else, your oneness with others, at that point, there is, uh, there is actually nothing to forgive. Everything is automatically forgiven at that higher altitude of, of spiritual awakening. So um, now trauma, well, trauma is a thing of like, um, there's sometimes very, very heavy things which are, which are bound into the ego with extreme emotion, uh, which create, can uh, create flashbacks, uh, a willingness to go into uh, repressed feelings and repressed memories or to go into addiction uh, to try and avoid these um, these uh, feelings and these memories through eating too many donuts or drinking some alcohol or whatever it is, try and keep those things from surfacing. And the reason being that the ego doesn't have the mechanisms to handle those effectively. Um, whereas you can, it, but of course it can be handled spiritually if you've got the tools to handle the trauma. So um, for myself, it's like uh, a question always arises um, in spiritual work: is do you really want to be free and happy, or do you want to hold on to this stuff? And you have to ask yourself this question. Uh, one of the greatest things that with the ego is that of justified resentment. Like uh, something has happened that's so bad, it's unforgivable. Now, the unforgivable means that you, um, 
you choose not to be free. Um, whatever has happened, if you, um, you have a choice to be free and to forgive, uh, even though your ego may see it's unforgivable and it's not the person doesn't deserve to be forgiven, or you have the choice to forgive or ask God, do the prayers, do the spiritual work to be free, whether it's the cancelling of beliefs, God is the love in which I forgive, the observer, feel the feelings, whatever it is, until it's gone, until it evaporates to nothingness and no longer holds you in bondage to limitation, separation. So it's always a question to ask. So for myself, you know, there is like, is there anything that is so precious that I would hold myself in bondage and suffering for all eternity that I wouldn't be willing to give it up? And today, you know, uh, I don't want to hold anything that keeps me in pain. And if the price is forgiveness and to let it go, uh, so I no longer hold on to it, I'm willing to do the work to be free. I want to be free. I want to be happy. Because the ego goes, um, do not let go of this stuff. Because um, uh, in some way, the ego believes it has the power to punish others or to make them suffer. If I suffer, then you'll suffer, you know, or if someone has made me suffer, I'll try and punish myself so that to, to make them suffer. I mean, it's all kind of, I, I think, really um, ridiculous ego mechanisms. Uh, the thing is, do I want to be free? It doesn't matter, you know, their soul and their actions is with, with divinity. It's not me to judge them or to be the punisher or for me to, if I choose to hold on to this stuff. So the while there's heavy feelings, and they're not resolved through field of feelings, cancelling beliefs, prayers for forgiveness, um, facing them spiritually and asking God for help, um, they will always create um, a lot of pain and suffering. Uh, even if you don't remember them because you're drinking a lot of alcohol and eating a lot of donuts, uh, they still create a lot of dysfunction in the life because they've not been released. Um, so to, to face them with spiritual courage and the spiritual tools, Okay, how do you forgive? Like, let's say there's a trauma. Suddenly, you stop eating the donuts and the alcohol. You start doing spiritual work, and you remember something that happened to you when you were, I don't know, 10 years old that you'd forgotten. And now that pain and getting flashbacks because you're starting to become spiritually conscious of what was unconscious. So what do you do? Well, what are the tools I would do? Well, first of all, um, let's use different ones. Well, the counseling of beliefs. At the level of the infinite, at the level when you no longer hold on to any thoughts or feelings or want to identify with them, at the level of complete truth uh, and oneness with God, then um, they don't exist because nothing holds on to them. So uh, it's safe to cancel them because in, when, you're, when you're one with God, with the absolute, with the supreme, uh, these things don't exist at that dimension. So it's okay to do the prayers of cancellation or the Course of Miracles prayers. Like, let's say I remember, I remember at eight years old, some, uh, an uncle was horrible to me. So I just say, uh, you know, you can do all of them. I cancel my belief in my uncle. Uh, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold because I believe in him. I still want to remember him. That's why he's showing up. I don't want to make him special and remember him. So I'll use the power of God to cancel him, to refute it. Um, I don't want that image no longer to exist in my memory. So I, keep, I cancel the images of this uh, flashback. Um, I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. God did not create these images. These images are not special. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Uh, God is the love in which I forgive these images. God help me to forgive these and release these forever. So I no longer remember them. What if there's heavy like pain or guilt or anger? Uh, that comes up like a huge charge, extreme, extreme emotions, uh, uh, traumatic emotions coming up that seem unbearable. Well, there's allowing them, feel the feelings, al allow them to be, ask, pray for courage to feel them, to be with the feelings until they pass. Don't try and eat a donut or drink some alcohol or try and repress them. Uh, pray for courage to feel without avoiding until they pass spiritually without uh, using gimmicks or band-aids from the world, special gimmicks. Um, so in that way, the energy just gets evolved like hot air. I mean, the emotion, the guilt, the shame, the anger is hot air. 
if you do, if you keep repressing it, it stays in there in the ego and creates dysfunction and manageability. So if you face it spiritually, it starts to get released. It may take days, weeks, even months to release it if it's a lot of energy. But uh, better it's released spiritually than you keep it in you, in the ego, because it creates uh, ego inflation, illnesses, diseases, all kinds of problems, uh, which you don't really want. Um, so <clears throat> trauma, flashbacks, cancelling, heart, yeah, so I hope I've spoken to the heart to forgive. The heart to forgive is like, the ego. Uh, this is normal. Everyone's going to have some people that they don't want to forgive. They think they're never going to forgive. But um, that's spiritual work. It's like to do spiritual work means you want to be free and happy forever, free of all suffering. That's what spiritual work means. So as soon as you want to be free, uh, the universe will show you what you're holding on to, which stops you from being free. So it's like if you say to God, I want to be free, God will show you the thing that you need to release to be free. So it's like, yeah, I want to be free, but this person needs to be punished and I, I'm not going to let go of my resentment and I'm going to, be, I'm going to hold on to the anger for, forever. Well, then <laughs> it's like, uh, so it's like uh, you sort of see it in that way, hard to forgive. I mean, sometimes things are like, you find so abominable that have happened that you think it's just you just can't forgive them well you know pray for a miracle to see it differently speak to people who are higher in the path than you that have forgiven really bad things you probably find stories everywhere of people who have forgiven the most incredible things and are, have a very inspiring stories and have released stuff so you get inspiration from them that it's possible to forgive the unforgivable and to be free um, okay, I hope that was uh, helpful. I'll stop the recording now. If I...